this is going to be uh, the beginning of part four of bringing this Honda back to life. I have wasted the entire day at the tax office. I was hoping I could get like a temporary registration so I could drive this thing around legally before I take it to get inspected. But they won't even give you a temporary registration without an inspection, a passing inspection. So I have no choice but to drive illegally. But the car is, you know, the title's transferred in my name. It has insurance. Uh, I haven't tested it yet, but I'm, I'm very hopeful about those Bumblebee batteries. One thing that kind of bothers me is its uh, mileage meter claims it's only getting 50 miles a gallon. And there's lots of reasons for that. Could be worn spark plugs or the fact that IMA didn't work. But one thing I did notice, the oil is way above its hash marks. Oh no, it's not. <laughs> its oil is within operating parameters. How is that possible? I've checked it so many times. <laughs> Maybe I'm just an idiot. Checked it a couple times and it was high. So I'm confused. Another thing is the air filter's full of oil. Uh, the, the little PCV valve that, that goes to the above the air filter is, is dripping oil out of it and going in there. But anyways, it, I'm going to do an oil change. See if that helps. Because you never know if there's the right oil in these things. If you take it to a, to a, you know, a cheap lube shop, you're not guaranteed to get the oil that you're, you need, especially when it's full th synthetic and they're charging $27. And you go out and buy the parts yourself and you spend forty dollars you like it's hard to you can't really trust them so i'm gonna make sure it has the uh zero w20 with uh I'm, you know i went with the o'reilly's house brand and and a wix filter so one thing i do still have is the original 2000 honda inside owner's manual uh it's falling apart and pages want to blow away it you know it recommends the zero twenty oil then it, then it says uh, 2.6 U.S. quart capacity. That's what we're going to do. What size? They look like they're tins. Let's see. Yeah, it's a 10 millimeter. This is a tough place to film. Um, <laughs> well, that's a close-up of my hand. But we're going for the, the black underbelly cover. Panel is off. The oil filter is right at the front of the car. Can you see the little blue thing? It's below the intake on the front of the engine is the oil filter. You see that drain plug? It's like a, a quick a quick drain thing, it's a valve. So that's cool. Can you see anything? I can't see anything. How's this work? Goes up. And over maybe? Okay. All right, so the oil filter it's being quite stubborn. So I've well, got my giant channel locks and it does appear that if I play this right, I'll be able to crush the oil filter and get a good bite on it. Maybe. Just gotta be careful not to crush the intake manifold, you know? I believe that's on the oil filter. Let's see if I can get it to move at all. Oh my God. It's still not easy. Is it moving? I actually can't see. I can't tell if it moved or not. Nope, it's just crushing and ripping paint off the oil filter. God damn. Oh, I think it moved. Now, you have to assume the oil filter grabbing position. You cry a little bit. Oh God. Oh fuck, why is it so tight? Okay, it's not loose yet. Crush the motherfucker. Twist the fuck out of it. Moved a little bit more that time. Oh, you know, tight oil filter doesn't necessarily mean someone like maliciously over tightened the fucking oil filter, but it certainly could mean that. Feels like it. All right, I gotta, I gotta enter my final form. In this position, I can squeeze it to death. Oh, fuck. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, oil all over me. It claims to be a seven quart drain pan. It might be a little less than half full. 
So it might have had the right amount of oil. Is this what, what a Honda filter looks like? A full F-U-L-L? -L? So it's not uncommon to have to work this hard to get an oil filter off, but that's not how it's supposed to be. You, you get these on, you know, hand tight, and you don't have to like, you know, put your full mass into it. You know, the reason why it's common to have to take them off this way is because everyone over tightens them uh, by a large margin, but, but the whole point of like a thread is, is, is it amplifies, you know, your, your, the pressure that you get on the seal. You start twisting it in there and every little twist you get, you get, you know, some exponential amount of force pushing on the, the rubber o-ring. So, I mean, they don't have to be that tight. They just have to be tight enough, enough not to vibrate off because they will seal up. All right, so the filter that I'm putting on, it's a, it's a Wix. It's the $12 filter versus the, uh, they, they didn't have their like high capacity synthetic oil one for this size. Uh, it's a Wix 51365. Lube that up a bit and stick it back on. Get back in my favorite position here. The best grip. All right, we're just going in blind. Found a thready thing. Got that pretty good. So the capacity, 2.6 quarts. I was reading some of the Honda Insight talk about this and a lot of people really struggle believing it's 2.6 quarts. You know, it's like, like they put it in and then it doesn't look good on the dipstick. And they're like, well, maybe it needs a little more and they add more and like, all right, I got to the top of the dipstick, that's good. Then people are like, oh, but the dipstick holes are one quart apart. I mean, it's definitely overfilled. You just gotta believe in the, the amount you put in. And other people are like, dude, no way. So I bought some full synthetic formulated for today's engines. This is the the Dex OS approved Gen 2 or Dex 1 Gen 2. That's, that's some uh, oil rating that GM uses for like ultra high quality, long lasting, durable oil. Cause I think they're pushing their oil changes back, you know, like <laughs> real far. like. 10 or 15,000 miles or something. I don't know. But the rating doesn't mean you can only use it. It's just this was $7.99 instead of like, you know, $12.99. So I'm going to use one of these. Oops, spilled some. So this looks like normal oil. You know, it's like a clear amber color. Now let's see what the genuine Honda oil looks like. This is the Honda Zero W20 Motor Oil Genuine Honda Ultra Low Viscosity formulated for specific Honda ultra fuel efficient automobiles. Meets Honda quality standard. Contains specific additives to exceed the API SJ performance and IL SAC GF. But this one, this one came with, wait, is that new oil? Is that used oil? That looks like new oil. The cap was already open. Oh uh, shit, we're gonna use it. So this came with the car. It was $8 of oil six years ago. But maybe opened up just to see what it's all about. I don't know. It looks clean. So that's two quarts. We're gonna go for a little more than half of this container. All right, I think that's around 2.6. All right, let's see if we can get another IMA start the next day. Wants you to idle for three minutes. This starts like a dream, man. It made a little bit of noise, but uh, but the oil light went off real quick. I like that. Wipe that clean. And then we'll give it a dunk all the way down till it's seated and take a peek. And it is at the top dot, so 2.6 ish. It is with a Wix filter. Nice. Um, so that's that. Oh no, it's not. I got to put the, the little belly pan back on. We had a very successful test of the IMA system. I only drove a mile and a half, but it, I went to Sonic and got a drink and ice cream for the kid, right? And, and it was assisting, it was regening, uh, IMA starting. I, I couldn't figure out how to get it to do 
you know, an engine stop when you, you know, stop. I need to read the procedure for that. But the engine didn't do so good. The engine is running like shit. You know, it's misfiring and very low power. It was, it was hard to just keep up with the round town traffic, honestly. We need to address that. And I'm going to start with the basics. Air fuel spark. You know what I'm saying? So one thing that I noticed before I even took it home is the condition of the, uh, the air filter. The air filter is just totally oil soaked. It's, you know, it's, it's oil soaking through this tube, which I think is, is the, uh, the, the, the crankcase ventilation tube. So there's probably a problem with the, uh, the PCV valve. So let's take this cover off and, uh, and investigate a bit. So the PCV valve, the positive crankcase ventilation, it's, it's simple. You know, it, it, uh, it takes air in and then it, it sucks, <laughs> you know, uh, crankcase gases, you know, blow by gases that escape the piston cylinder rings, right? And it takes it down to the intake manifold and burns it up. And so if the PCV isn't working, we'll, we'll just get all the gases escaping to the top of the, to the air filter. You need to, you know, test this valve right here, this red thing, that's a PCV valve. They're very cheap and they're just like a little ball valve or whatever. I wonder if I can get this out without ruining everything. Okay, that's going good. It's, uh, it sounds like it's not working so good. <laughs> See? So, uh, let's clean this up. When I go to the parts store, I'll probably buy a new one, but I'm just going to see what we can do with a little bit of carb cleaner. All right. It's already it's it's more free and the valve is actuating decently that sounds a lot better <laughs> so I'm just gonna drop that back in right like this I'm gonna fire up the car all right this could be hard to hear maybe you can hear it but I'm checking vacuum I don't know if you can hear that, but it is sucking through the PCB valve. I probably should have done this before I cleaned it just to prove a point. But that means at least this tube is drawing a vacuum. So hopefully that will prevent, you know, oil from going into the air filter. But that's a decent vacuum for idle, right? Let's just shove that back in there. So hopefully that fixes the oil soaked air filter problem. We'll see. But now, uh, you know, because fuel feels a little bit trickier to get out, but but people have come up with some clever solutions over there on uh, on uh, Insight Central. So you know, one of them is is you supply power uh, to one of the pins of the relay to run the pump, and you disconnect you know one of the fuel lines, and you just let the pump pump the old gas out of out of the car. Cause this car set for at least five years, and it had half a tank of gas. I put I filled it up with with fresh gas, and then added a can of sea foam to it hoping to, to get some benefit but but you know <laughs> I, might, I might might still need to drain it but you know i'm i'm convinced that it was starving for air because the the air filter is so oil soaked but now let's check the spark so back here we got our three uh what, what do they call these these things i've never had a car this modern that had these coil packs but i'm, I'm gonna just go ahead and unplug them all so that let us get this uh, wiring harness out of the way a bit. But the spark plugs are under here. So let's get our old 10 millimeter out. And let's see if these will break loose. Oh my, okay. That one broke loose. That one broke loose, that's nice. Take the bolt out and then there's a coil pack. I'm gonna set these up in order in case there's something special about them and then let me get a spark plug socket okay it feels like these spark plugs have been in there for a long time I'm not liking how they feel so I'm trying to be careful because they're not wanting to just easily come out 
immediately after. It's like that's a lot of resistance for a spark plug. So I'm just going back and forth. I'm trying to loosen the threads. I'm going to move on to a different spark plug just to try to save myself from <laughs> destroying these. Let's see. Oh, it's pretty tight. This one is not as stiff. I'm still going to ease it forward and backwards a couple times before I go for it. Because I really don't want to strip out a head. Like, I, I, I haven't done a helicoil since high school auto tech. Like, I, don't, I wouldn't know how to fix this, man. Right, I think this one is going to come out without being spooky. Let's see. A little bit of resistance, but not a terrifying amount. Well, I say that. Now we're at sort of a scary amount. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to go back in and I'm just ease it back out. Give the chance for the threads to clean up a bit. Okay, it's not too spooky. Okay, we're getting into spooky. A little spooky. And we'll go back past the spooky so it gets easy. And we'll go back into the spooky in reverse, taking it out. Oh my god. I hate this. Uh, I mean, it could be destroyed all the threads. Fuck. Now, I'm, I'm going to be super, super, super cautious here. Oh, my. Why is it like this? Ugh. I swear, every car I've ever wanted and bought has always been a problematic one. Oh, it's so weird. I finally got it uh, finger tight. Or finger loose. Let's see. Are we free yet? Let's see if it'll come out. So I don't have any rubber in my socket. I'm just gonna try snatch grabbing it with these if I can find it. There it is. Let's see. Okay. It doesn't look like there's metal on the threads, so that's good. NGK I R I L Z F R. 5A11. So uh, apparently these are registered for a certain orientation so it puts a spark plug in the right place. So that looks like the right spark plug for a, a Honda Insight. Longer. Is that some sort of iridium tip? So I'm going to keep these in order also. But it, it doesn't look that bad. I don't know. See there's quite a bit of electrode there. That gap looks a little bit wide maybe. But I'll have to uh, confirm that. That was that was that was that was a spooky spark plug. I don't like how that feels. They should just <laughs> want to come out. So I might get some of that anti seize for the threads when I put them back in. Oh, it's just they shouldn't be scary. <laughs> Resisting the entire way out. That's a no no. You know, you wonder like, like, hey, what, what spark plug goes in each cylinder? Well, right, right next to where the spark plug is, there's a letter stamped. So I had three B spark plugs come out and I got a B, a B, and a B. So it has the right spark plugs in it. The spark plugs are stamped on, on the, the tip with what they are. But these look a little bit rough to me. <laughs> and this one, the one that was tricky coming out, this compression washer is crooked. And there's all this buildup and stuff. I don't know if these are good to go or not. I don't know how old they are. What do I do? Do I just clean them up and stick them back in? So I just got to see if I can get these without having to wait. I'm going to run to O'Reilly's or something. <laughs> see what they know about this. All right, so the parts store run was a total bust. <laughs> uh... I'm going to just do some hillbilly shit and, and clean these up a bit because the uh, electrodes look pretty good, honestly. And stick these back in with some uh, you know, anti-seize and order some online. Also the air filter. They couldn't get one till tomorrow, but they could not figure out these spark plugs. So... Alright, I didn't go like too overboard cleaning these up. I just... You know, got the 
crud out of the threads and knock some of the buildup off of them. But you know, they're, they're still, you know, fairly dirty. But, but the, the electrodes themselves are still there. I mean, I don't have much experience. I've never had a car that needed iridium tipped spark plugs before. I bought some cars that had iridium tip spark plugs in them that, you know, ruined the way they drive and ruined the fuel economy and had to go back to the traditional spark plug, but I've never had one that actually needed them. So it's kind of interesting, I guess. I did buy a small package of anti-seize just because it was, it was a little creepy how hard it was to get these out. We don't need to go too crazy with, with anti-seize. So I guess this is like a conductive anti-seize since it's like copper color. I'm just going to try to avoid getting anti-seize, you know, up top. But try to get it fairly close. Whoops, I said that and I put it right there. Now getting this in there without a socket that has a boot is just like a different story. I guess I'm just going to drop it in there <laughs> and try to pick it up with this thing. I'm gonna go finger tight. All right. And uh, I don't have a decent torque wrench here, so I'm not gonna torque it down to spec. I'm just gonna go somewhat normal feeling spark plug tightness. Not too tight, not too loose, just right. All right, so my spark plugs are in. I'm just going to drop these right on. We'll take our bolts, get them started by hand. You know, just making sure we don't cross thread. I'm a big fan of starting things by hand. I know it takes a little bit longer, but I really don't mind being kind of cautious. Now let's tighten these up a bit. Not crazy. It is going into aluminum, and then the wiring harness will just uh, drop that back where it goes. It will plug these back in. I'm just going to leave the air filter out. It's too oily. It's not doing doing us any favors. And I'm going to start it up. Make sure it still runs. It, it's a fairly noisy engine for, you know, how little it is. It doesn't sound like much with the hood down, but there, there's a hum. I don't know what that is. There's the tickety tick ticks of the injectors. And it sounds like one of the valves is out of adjustment. Or all of them could be, who knows. But that clunk, 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 come from up high. So it probably needs valve, valve adjustment. I'm not going to do that just yet, but we haven't fixed anything yet. <laughs> I mean, I guess we fixed the PCV valve, but that's not much of a victory. All right, so I'm just going to button this up for now and move to some other problems. One problem is the rear shocks are just shot. They're expensive, but Honda Insight has some workarounds, or uh, Insight Central has workarounds, rather, uh, of varying degrees of, of awesomeness. and. I'll probably do that. But another thing I didn't like on my test drive was the brakes. The pedal seems like it goes down kind of far before it starts activating the brakes. And they, they make this sort of like sound like they're just, they're, they're just lightly making contact and not really doing a whole lot. Uh, I mean, they're, they're good enough to be safe to drive ish, but, but I don't, I don't feel like all four brakes are, engaging properly so i'm going to take off some rear wheels we're going to look at some shocks you know all right just moving on to the the rear see what's going on i'm gonna take these uh fender skirts off little flathead screwdriver and let's take this this guy off and while it's sitting on the ground, I'm going to loosen the lug nuts. I'm going to put my jack in place. Let's see. 
don't remember if this one is any good or if it leaks or what, but <laughs> we're gonna go for it. Oh my gosh, one of the wheels is falling off. So I put the spacer <laughs> back in the wheel and the wheel back on the on the thing. Okay, there we go. <laughs> now we'll try this again. Looks like there's drum brakes. I thought these had four-wheel disc brakes, but I don't really know. Maybe I was inventing that fact. Oh my gosh. There it is. All right, so we got the, uh, the spring, and this looks to be intact. A lot of people like to replace the springs. They say that uh, these just suck. <laughs> and, and so they found some like British car or something where, where the springs uh, you know, are the same size and they put those on. And then the, the shocks, the shocks are the, the funny part. They, they cost like 500 bucks a, a set from Honda. I made some little notes on the shocks. Looking into rear shocks, turns out there are very limited options for shocks that fit the first gen Insight. The Honda OEM costs $263 each. And I made a note that you can buy a set of, you know, two rear shocks, Gaz shocks from Hybrid Revolt for $264.99. But then there's a DIY mod using the Monroe 5752 uh, where they modify those to fit and you can do that for like under 50 bucks. But let's just <laughs> forget about all that right now. Let's just look at the, the brakes, see what's going on. They're a little dirty, but they're there and the pads look to be in good shape. So uh, maybe everything's fine. Maybe I should just do a little clean and adjust to these and maybe bleed them a bit. So I'm just going to leave those as is for now because they're not worn out. The, you know, this fact that how free this spins and easily it comes off, I think you know, they're, they're out of adjustment. But what I'm curious about is the shocks. I really don't want to be under here without a jack stand. I guess I could get a jack stand somewhere on one of these arms. So I didn't really find a place I like for the jack stands. So I'm just gonna sort of try to split the difference here. I'm just gonna kind of split the difference a little bit of weight on the jack stand, and then the rest on the jack. I feel safe with that. All right, so this appears to be a 14 millimeter, and the backing nut is bigger than a 14. Let's just see if it'll come off. Oh, I don't wanna do that to my gear wrench, but let's just see. All right, all right. My tripod's a little long for a good view of this, but I'm gonna go for over here. Well, these are pretty tight. So I'm going for the top of the shock. Oh my god! So I think I'm seeing some DIY action here. So this might have already had the the shock conversion at some point in the past. The problem is the Monroe shocks are just notoriously bad. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, they just last barely two years, if, if that, you know? Okay, so this is the DIY conversion. So this car has already had it. And uh, this shock, it resists a little bit. So maybe the other one is uh, worse than this one. But every time I hit a bump, it was going off the bump stops everything's just flying and it sounds like the car is dying it was like it was a terrible ride so it had the dielectric barrier between this and and the uh, aluminum the number on here 5752 st so so this isn't i mean like it, it resists a little bit and it might have a little bit of gas charge left in it because it goes up easier than it goes down but uh yeah these probably need replacing but you can see you buy the the shock and then you you uh put a pipe through it then you crush the pipe but you drill holes and you bolt it on so that's pretty that's, that's yeah that's that's the the trick so you don't spend 500 dollars on shocks it feels like there's no shocks when you hit a bump going like a, a tiny bump you hit a tiny bump going 30 miles an hour it feels like there is no dampening just full all the way boom 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 boom, boom, boom. i mean bad so I'm going to go to the parts store, see if I can find one of these 5752s. I guess I need to buy some new pipe and we'll just go from there. 
I'm also gonna get some brake cleaner and adjust these rear brakes. All right, but just to be clear, these shocks are worn out. You know, I'm just surprised that they still resist as much as they do, <laughs> considering how bad the ride was. I mean, it felt like there's no shocks in it, but but this is this is what I can do to these shocks all the way out, bottom them out, right? So that's that's uh that's not normal. But as far as the brakes are concerned, uh, I don't know why I thought there's disc brakes on the back, but that is what I thought. Let's clean them. I like to have a drip pan because this stuff is gross. If you have a brush you're willing to get gross, uh, it helps use a little bit less product. So I'm going to spray a bit. Just a little like that. We'll loosen some stuff up. Ooh, we're losing some paint off of things. All the parts numbers are going. We'll be a little more serious with it. But this brake cleaner is supposed to be uh, safe for all the rubber and all the other components, right? It's supposed to evaporate completely, leave no residue, so you won't be slipping around on oil. Hopefully it's safe for ABS sensors. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna call that clean. We're gonna do something similar to this. Let's, let's just get a little bit of liquid in here. Let's smooth that liquid around. Try not to get it on my fingies. Uh, why didn't I put gloves on? I always forget gloves. I have a whole box of really nice nitro gloves, but I just never managed to put them on in time. I think that's pretty good. So I guess what we have here is a fancy insight drum where it's aluminum with steel in it that's that's cool it's still a little heavy but i guess it's way lighter than uh see gloves than a, a standard steel drum so this stuff it just flashes off after a while all right zoomed in real tight the way we're going to adjust these brakes is by manipulating this little ratcheting system but we do it with the drum on and from the back side so you won't be able to see much but back here there's a rubber plug so I just pulled this out from the back side. Right now, it seems like there's like, it touches nothing. Which is probably good for fuel economy, <laughs> but it's bad for the responsiveness of the brakes. So, I'm gonna insert the screwdriver through the back where I pulled the plug out. I'm gonna find that ratchet. So where is that component? I think I'm there. Am I? Did I miss it? Oh my god. <laughs> I can't do it. Why can't I figure this out? This is embarrassing. Okay, so ratchet mechanism right here. <laughs> when you go in through the little port in the back, there's no way to access the... Uh, the can you see where the, the screwdriver comes? That's as far towards the ratchet as I can get. And that's like half an inch away. <laughs> so that's why I can't find the ratchet. Okay. So I guess we're going to adjust them from, from uh, here and just try slipping the, the drum on. All right, so here's, here's the plan. We're going to go just a few clicks and we're going to try it. That's still a lot of nothing. So let's do a few more clicks. It has very slight drag. That's actually what you want. Now to get it... You know, I'm going to I'm gonna go stomp the brake pedal and get those pads to, to come out and come back in. And that'll let us know if they're actually, you know, dragging a little bit. Or or uh, if, if maybe just expanding it just pushed out a little set. I don't know. But it, it'll, it'll line up the the shoes with, with the drum after you hit the brakes. It should change how this sounds. We got still a little bit on the loose side. But you really don't want to drag them too much. So there's three more clicks. That's feeling pretty loose still. So I guess these might have been just way out of adjustment. Let's try this unspecified amount of a lot and see what that does. So that gets us where we can't get the shoes on. So then we'll go back the other way. 
still very free. <laughs> so, I don't know. Having to take this on and off is kind of weird. There's no other plugs back there to access this, so I'm going to try three more. Okay, that, that sounds a lot more... Wait, it still free spins pretty well. But there's a little bit of contact. Not, not so much as to be a problem. And if it's too much, it just wears, wears the shoe down until it's at where it needs to be, right? So I like that. I like that sort of resistance quite a bit. So I'm gonna leave it at that adjustment. I'm gonna put the plug back in. That helps keep the brakes clean. There's that, and I'm gonna do it to the other side too. I'm gonna leave this shock off because I've ordered some from O'Reilly's. Uh, they'll be in tomorrow. I just got the Monroe 572052s. I mean 5752s. And uh, I'm gonna do the pipe thing again. In the future, I think I'll, I'll, I'll uh, order the, the GADs. Uh, Cause you know, adjustable shocks. That sounds pretty cool. <laughs> so just for lulls. I, I'm, I'm, I guess I was exaggerating where I'm like, oh, it's, it feels like there weren't even shocks back there. I'm surprised they do anything. But look, could you imagine if that was your ride without shocks? <laughs> so, so worn out shocks do quite a bit. They just don't do anything uh, for even a lightweight vehicle like this 1800 pound Insight. But that, that's what it would be like without shocks. You'd just be top to bottom, blah, 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 blah. you'd fly off the road and die. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go, a no shock riding car. So I'm gonna bounce it a bit. All right. And I'm gonna let go. <laughs> All right, so now on this side, let's see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, that was a little more effort to squash it down to nothing. All right, let's. There is a little bit of a leak here that needs some addressing. This boot's kind of half blown off. Liquid's coming out. So I need a new slave cylinder. Uh-oh. <laughs> this could be another like impossible to find part. I have so many parts in order already. But look at this. You see the liquid coming out? I'm gonna try O'Reilly's again, I guess. Uh, they probably won't have it. And here's another thing we should resolve before it becomes a problem. This looks like, yeah, this goes to the ABS sensor. And uh, both of the, the mounts that hold it have busted. And then right here, it's been rubbing on the tire. You see that? So we're getting close to wearing out <laughs> you know having a problem so we need to secure these things back out of the way all right well that's it for the day <laughs> i gotta go to the parts store for a third time see if i could find another thing and uh i'm i'm locking up everything i'm not leaving anything out here in active project zone because all this aluminum and stuff you know my, my neighborhood's not terrible but damn people steal shit you know so, so the wheels going in the garage and, and all this stuff's going to get locked up in here. You know, because I've seen these on, on eBay for, I think, I think they're selling for like 130 bucks on eBay. You know, I just, there's too much value here <laughs> to leave the chance, I guess. So a new wheel cylinder is about four days out from, you know, shipping and stuff. So I'm going to try taking it apart, see if I can clean it up and slow down the leak just so I can move on. Just taking a little decisive action. Okay. Oh yeah, perfect. That's how you keep up with stuff. Nice. I'm just gonna get this boot off, set that aside. I'm gonna pull this piston. Ooh. Let's see. Might be able to just clean this thing. Alright, so there's one piston, there's another piston. And there's a springy a spring a jig in there so there's all sorts of gross crud falling out of here water and oil and all kinds of stuff we're just gonna see see if we can help the situation in any way shape form or fashion okay we can just slow it down so it looks pretty good in there honestly i'm just gonna keep rubbing on it <laughs> Gonna rub one out 
and uh, see what we can do. There's some weird green buildup in here. I guess that's like water and algae and nasty stuff. I don't know. Do you see that layer of green? All right, so that's one side done. I'm just gonna cram this back in there. Wipe down the spring a bit. This one's just gross. I don't know if this will stop the leak. I don't see how it could, but desperate times, des desperate measures. You know, this sometimes these little hillbilly fixes are not the you know your worst option. <laughs> I just want to drive. Let's see what sort of crud comes out of here. Yeah, some more of that disgusting green gunk. Ugh. So all the brake fluid needs to be changed. I need to look into the ABS system on this car because some of them require like special procedures or a spe not special but like a specific procedure to do it the right way so uh i haven't looked into that yet all right i clean this side up a bit I'm gonna... okay so an eight millimeter wrench fits the the bleeder dessert okay which way this should be <clears throat> am i thinking about that right tight loose yeah okay i'm gonna open that up Am I fighting the spring or am I fighting pressure? <laughs> okay, let's see if I can put this back together. That pokey's through there and then a shoe goes on it and that just chills there. Then you have a spring of a thing and you get some amount of compression with a click. Yeah, something like that. All right, where well, I got it put back together, all cleaned up, it is air dried. I dripped it for a while and uh, I guess it's ready for Bleeding. Let's, let's see if we can get this on there. All right, so I got this side cleaned and adjusted. About the same amount of resistance as the other side, if <laughs> memory serves. Now, let's see if I can get my girlfriend to help me bleed these brakes. I need a, a brake pedal pumper. All right, will you pump it three times and then hold it down? All right, so holding. I'm just gonna see if we get some farts out of here. All right, pump and hold. Ooh, I got one little air bubble. Let's do it again. Holding. Uh, that's probably pretty good. Thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie the uh, ABS cable somewhere. Just whatever. I'm gonna do that. So I'm not sure if my little repair is holding up yet or not. I think it's too soon to to know. But no leaks, visible leaks yet, but it hasn't been driven, so whatever. All right, got the air filtering shocks. So this is a Wix, what's that, 46499, 46499 air filter. Let's see what it looks like. So they are a little on the brown side. I was curious about that. I wasn't sure if this was so oil stained that it used to be white, but yeah, so wicks and a wicks. Very nice. But they are, there's a big difference between clean and dirty and oily and not. So I don't know how big of a difference this will do on, on my overall power issue, but hopefully, hopefully it helps. <laughs> Cause this, this poor thing, it just has no guts at all. All right, so I also have the Monroe OE Spectrum 5752 and some uh, 3H galvanized pipe. I just want to see what these are like new compared to old real quick. So, it's like covered in oil. It's leaking already. <laughs> That's a good sign. Or is that just manufacturing oil? I mean, it's wet all over the top. Oh my god. Okay. I think that one is fucked. Let's see if the other one's any good. If this is how they are, I'm going back with the old ones. They weren't worn out. Alright, this one's dry. Jesus. Okay, there's not much to these shocks. Maybe they don't wear out. Maybe they just suck from the beginning. 
Okay, so here is a used one. Let me go. Here is a new one. Okay, that one's pretty easy. That one's a little harder, but at least it wants to recover. God, these are bullshit. These are absolute bullshit. Is this one starting to leak now? It's like the biggest piece of shit. What the fuck? Oh, you bottom it out? I think it's stuck. This is a joke. A fucking joke. This is worse. This is... Fuck. I'm gonna return this fucking shit. God. Damn. What a joke. Jesus Christ. Talk about... Talk about a buzz kill. This just kills me. At least the... At least the, the trash is still being picked up. Maybe there's hope for civilization. All right, I'm going back on with the old ones because they were literally were like better than the new ones. I don't, I just don't get it. So I got the little piece of plastic for the dielectric, so we don't have the the galvanistic corrosion or whatever when you have the steel touching the aluminum. I don't know. Oh. So <laughs> interestingly enough, in my town, the O'Reilly. Auto Parts family, they have a real estate division. They came to the city and said, hey, we're gonna build this amazing hotel convention center. You just gotta, you know, hook us up with some tax breaks and maybe give us some money directly. And and so long story short, they came here and they got a 100% tax rebate on all of their, their, uh, their, their hotel occupancy tax, their their sales taxes, and and uh, something else for 25 years. And then they went to the county, and they had after building it, they had their building reappraised and took off like two thirds of the value of it. So so the property taxes they're paying, you know, are are minuscule to the size of the operation. And so, so these, these welfare queens, these billionaire welfare queens, then they have the gall to sell me a shop for twice what it costs on Amazon and deliver it to me broken. <laughs> I just can't, I can't stand it, dude. And the whole reason I need shocks like that <laughs> is because the roads are so trashed because we're giving so much money to these developers that we can't even fill potholes. It's ridiculous. All right, well, I'm out of ideas. <laughs> Let's test drive this thing. Okay. All right, we gotta start. Guys, be easy on the brakes for a second. <sighs> Make sure they're still there. <laughs> So everything's rattling. So previously I was driving around with the air conditioning on. That's part of the reason why it, <laughs> it's rattling. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep keep that going. So the, uh, the parking brake is in a much different spot. So I'm just gonna go back a little. Okay, the brakes already, I can tell, they're, they're more responsive, so that's, that's good. We're gonna be wobbling a bit. So I'm just gonna sneak around town, try not to get a ticket. One thing we do fund real well in this town is the police. They're everywhere. And they are actively going after a street racing crew. <laughs> and so probably this little insight's gonna get profiled as like, oops, a, a racing car. Right, I'm gonna check back in after driving around a bit. We'll warm it up first. Well, I've gone about 15 miles. And so far, so good. Uh, I went out like towards the lake on the country roads and whatnot and got busted yet, but I'm gonna turn around and head home now.
the trend for the IMA is to ever go down. <laughs> so I'm down to less than half a battery now. Despite being in the hill country, I, I think I'm burning more energy going uphill than it could collect coming back down. But you know, it's it's working. So we're we're cruising around with the AC on and it's seems to be going good. I don't know. When I maintain speed, half the time uh, the green charge comes on. I think the engine is smoothing out. But most importantly, there's no check engine light or IMA light that's popped up. I think I've gone the requisite amount of miles before I can try a, uh, a test, you know, and a safety and emissions test. Ooh, we got a big tall hill first thing, so we're gonna hit it hard. All right, there's a four and a half thousand RPM change, full assist, good amount of throttle. Oh uh, yeah, 50 miles an hour already. Third gear, full assist, 3,000 RPM. We're still climbing in speed, 55, 57, 58, 59, 60 miles an hour. And then we, uh, we just crested the hill. Let's go to fifth. Now we're going downhill. The fuel economy meter has pegged out. It's charging the pack up a bit. We leveled out. Now we're around 50 something miles per hour per gallon going 62. <laughs> yeah, so these Bumblebee batteries, I guess that's what we're talking about. They're doing pretty good. And I haven't cycled them yet. I just charged them and stuck them in the pack. So maybe I'll, eventually I'll get around to a you know a grid charge discharge grid charge thing and uh, I'm not gonna take them down to zero like a lot of people say I think I'm just gonna bring it down to like 80 or 90 volts <laughs> you know just right below their their low voltage area or maybe just a hundred volts I don't know maybe I'll go down to 120 on the first cycle and down to a hundred on the second and call it good see if there's any uh, any extra capacity that we can get out of these things but for now i think it's going pretty good well i'm home again <laughs> made it so i have a picture of uh when i first started the car this took a picture of of the battery you know after i put the the, the bumblebee batteries in first started it took this picture just showing that the battery pack was accepted by the car and registered as full and it shows um, total mileage of 207,563. Now I'm up to 590, so 28, 28 miles. No check engine light, no IMA light. I think I'm ready to go, but uh, I'm gonna fart around at home for a second. Let's see what time it is. Oh no, I gotta go pick up my kid in 10 minutes from school. But I can't get it registered until Wednesday anyways because the, the rules are stupid. They said since I transferred the title, I had to wait three business days before I could register the car. But after waiting two and a half hours in line, I was like, got to accomplish something. <laughs> so I just went ahead and transferred the title. But I think we're good to go. One thing is, is, is what I was calling a misfire. I'm not so convinced it's a misfire anymore because... And, and all other throttle positions besides maintaining speed, it doesn't miss. It's just in that one specific throttle position where you're just maintaining speed, does it get weird? So it could be like a throttle position sensor problem. They, they seem to wear out in the, the you know, where they get used the most at. Uh, but I guess that doesn't throw a code. Um, but yeah, we're making progress. This video is not going to end until I have a registration sticker. All right, we're, we're getting a lot closer to this video being done. <laughs> I went out today and I got my inspection done. I passed. Woo! So uh, I did swing by the tax office and they weren't joking. <laughs> they are not going to let me register this car until Wednesday, which is tomorrow. So I waited in line for an hour and it was just wasted my time. Uh, but I was, I was just hoping. I wanted to pick my kid up from school in this today. 
Uh, but as I, you know, before I went to the uh, get inspection, I, I had to get a wiper blade, and I went ahead and picked up a cabin air filter. I watched a couple videos, and apparently, these things, if they have the plastic on them, they've never had a cabin air filter done. So, I'm going to pop this open and, and see if this thing's ever had an air filter. Because this car suffers from old man breath. It just smells old. Everything about this smells it smells like a car that is set for five or six years with the windows up and a water leak. It, it's a little bit, I wouldn't call it stinky, but it has an odor. And turning the air conditioning on does not help at all. It actually makes it worse. So I, I, I imagine the filter's yucky. There's a cabin filter. It's below here. And they have uh, cut off this piece of plastic here. So it's been done before. So we just need to remove this piece of metal. All right, so we're just gonna pop this thing off and uh, have we get slack. I think that'll be enough slack. Ugh, let's see what's going on here. So, ooh. okay, well, <laughs> it's seen better days. Uh, it's almost full. But it's not the original one. There's quite a bit of gunk in here. Jesus. Okay. Well, well, we're gonna we're gonna vacuum that out. <laughs> so it's not the original original, but Jesus, that is gross. Okay, let's get a uh, the filter. Out of here if we can. It might have been glued in. Okay. Ugh. <laughs> it's almost full. It's like feathers and strings and hair and what if a cat lived <laughs> on top of this or something? Jeez. Okay. Let's see what this STP looks like. Then it has, the filter has some directional arrows. And this has some directional arrows. So I guess we'll go in there. Well, this thing's getting dirty just being near this thing. All right, so we gotta tuck one layer of filter behind this thing, I guess. Yeah. So there's some assembly required. So there's a little lip here on, on either side. So we've got to tuck the filter a little bit behind those. All right, here's my idea. Because I had a little trouble getting that in there the way it was before. I'm going to use my ID. This is my old student ID. I'm going to try to get it started that way. Yeah, we're started. Let me get the other side started. I'm ruining the new filter before I even get it in there. Okay. Looks like we're started. Let's see if we can crush it in there now. Does it want to go? Yeah. <gasps> it broke it. This side went. Let's see if we can recover this. Okay, there we go. That wasn't as easy as it looks. <laughs> Actually, it was just as difficult as it looks because I filmed it. Okay, harder than it should be, maybe. That's in there real good. If you haven't changed your, your uh, cabin filter in a while, now might be the best time to do it. All right, so airflow. <laughs> I wouldn't pay attention. No, there's tabs here. You can't put it in wrong. So there's a little, little, uh, tabs here and they match on this side so airflow goes this way it won't let you assemble it the wrong way so ugh. nice this bar is a, not like tricky but it's not like super 
easy either. I tried to not have to take it off all the way, but it really seems like it prefers you to take it off all the way. Are we in there? I'm not so sure we are. Oh, that feels like it. Okay. Nice. That's there. This is there. Cool. So there's the, the two concealed ones are 10 millimeter, and then the, the four visible fasteners are 8 millimeter. Did it. I got the uh, registration done, new tags on, you know, new license plates, a new tag, everything's good to go. So this, you know, it, it, it can concludes, I guess, bringing this uh, uh, insight back from the dead. Uh, it's a four part series. Uh, in, in the first episode, we we started up after it set for more than five years, drove it home. Second episode, we dive into uh, trying to grid charge the battery pack and discovering that it was assembled wrong by a mechanic. Third video, we uh, buy some used untested cells from Bumblebee batteries and put them in and they seem to be working great. A little too early to say exactly, but you know. And then uh, this video, you just watched it, so you know what it's about. And so now we have we have something that's set dormant for at least five years, back on the roads again, legal, and best I can tell, fully functional. The only thing that's not working is is the the buttons on the uh, instrument cluster, the, the 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 trip odometer and the brightness up and down. They're they're not responding, but I'm pretty sure Insight Central has. Uh, a solution to that. I just need to uh, look it up. I haven't tried yet, but we got we did it so I'll, I'll be making more videos on on this car as Repairs are needed <laughs> But 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 that's the end of of this uh, this series at least so Thank you so much for watching and uh, y'all be good